other moon and its crazy orbit could reveal mysteries of our solar system. IFL Science reports, we all know and love the moon. We're so assured that we only have one that we don't even give it a specific name. It's the brightest object in the night sky and amateur astronomers take great delight mapping its craters and seas and to date it is the only other heavenly body with human footprints. What you might not know is that the moon is not the Earth's only natural satellite. Just recently, in 1997, we discovered that our Earth has another moon as well. It's another body and it's called 3753 Krutne, C-R-U-I-T-H-N-E, Krutne. It's what's called a quasi-orbital satellite of Earth. This simply means that Krutne does not loop around the Earth in a nice ellipse the same way as our moon does, or indeed the artificial satellites we loft into orbit. Instead, Krutne scuttles around the inner solar system in what's called a horseshoe orbit. To help understand why it's called a horseshoe orbit, you can imagine we're looking down at the solar system, rotating at the same rate as the Earth goes around the Sun. From our viewpoint, the Earth looks stationary, a body on a small, simple shoehorse orbit around the Earth moves towards it, and then turns around, moves away once more. It's moving so far away, it's approaching Earth from the other side, and it turns around and moves away again. Horseshoe orbits are actually quite common for moons in the solar system. Saturn has a couple of moons in this configuration, for instance. And what's unique about Krufne is how it wobbles and sways along its horseshoe. If you look at Krufne's motion in the solar system, it makes a messy ring around Earth's orbit, swinging so wide that it comes into the neighborhood of both Venus and Mars. Krufne orbits the Sun about once a year, but it takes nearly 800 years to complete this messy ring shape around the Earth's orbit. Krufni close up. Krufni is our second moon. What's it like there? Well, we don't really know. It's only about five kilometers across, which is not dissimilar to the dimensions of the comet 67P churyumov gerasmenko which is currently playing host to the Rosetta orbiter and the Philae lander. The surface gravity of 67P is very weak. Walking at a spirited pace is probably enough to send you strolling into the wider cosmos. And this is why it was so crucial that Philae was able to use its harpoons to tether itself to the surface, and why their failure meant that the lander bounced so far away from its landing site. Given that Krufne isn't much more to us at this point than a few blurry pixels on an image, it's safe to say that it sits firmly in the middle, middling sized range for non-planetary bodies in the solar system and any human or machine explorers would face similar challenges as Rosetta and Philae did on 67P. Now if Krufne struck the Earth, that would be an extinction level event, similar to what is believed to have occurred at the end of the Cretaceous period. Luckily it's not going to hit us anytime soon, its orbit is tilted out of the plane of the solar system. The astrophysicists have shown, using simulations, that while it can come quite close to Earth, it's extremely unlikely to hit us. The point where it is predicted to get close is about 2,750 years away. Krufne is expected to undergo a rather close encounter with Venus in about 8,000 years. There is a good chance that that will pull that will put paid uh, to our uh, erstwhile spare moon flinging it out of its harm's way and out of the terrain family uh, but it's not just Krufne. the story does not end there take a good foster like a good, good foster home the earth plays host to many wayward lumps of rock looking for gravitational well to hang around near Astronomers have actually detected several other quasi-orbital satellites that belong to our Earth, all here for a little while before caroming 
onto pastures new. So what can we learn about the solar system from Krufnik? Well, quite a lot actually. Like the many other asteroids and comets, it contains forensic evidence about how the planets were assembled. Its kooky orbit is an ideal testing ground for our understanding of how orbital solar systems evolved under gravity. And as we said before, it was not until the end of the 20th century that we even realized that bodies would enter such weird horseshoe orbits and stay there for such a long time. The fact that they do shows us that such interactions will have occurred while the solar system was forming because we think terrestrial planets grow via collisions of bodies of Krithni sized and above. This is a big new variable. One day, Krufni could be a practice site for landing humans on asteroids and perhaps even mining them for the rare earth metals our new technologies desperately crave. Most importantly of all, Krufni teaches us that the solar system is not eternal and by extension, neither are we. This article was originally on The Conversation and it's on IFL Science. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.